I mean, your, I mean, your take here on, well, the dovish tones from the Federal Reserve, from Jay Powell come Friday, but still some parts of the market running hot and we all lie the Labor data on Friday. Yeah, you know, the market has kind of changed its stripes in terms of the cycle, it seems, because the Fed, as well as the fiscal response a year and a half ago, kind of remove that left tail from the economic cycle, it seems. And that's why home prices are now, you know, up 20 percent just since the COVID days, uh, because they never had that left tail where they went down and people got foreclosed and uh, businesses went bankrupt. I mean, some businesses certainly did. So we're kind of in this weird mode where we're still in a mid-cycle expansion. Things are still uh, good, but parts of the, the cycle seem more like late cycle. So labor, you know, a tight labor market, the Fed now, you know, starting the kind of the, the pre tape if you will. Uh, but ultimately, um, if inflation is transitory, and, and you were just mentioning this, you know, this before, um, then the Fed can kind of go slow. And either way, I think the Fed has really no choice but to go only as far as the markets can handle. And the markets, as you mentioned, you know, both the bond market and the stock market seem pretty chill right now with where the Fed is going. And the Fed has a very small window uh, to, to, to taper, right? Because if it's going to hike rates in 2023, it needs to go from $120 billion a month to zero yeah. between now and then. Uh, and so it, it needs to get going. Absolutely. Although, of course, uh, Jay Powell would say, oh, no, no, those two aren't connected at all. You're in uh, one. One definitely doesn't necessarily uh, preclude the other. I am curious, though, here about the market reaction that we saw over the last couple of days here following uh, the speech at Jackson Hole here and the general idea here that if you get a taper and, and it goes in an orderly fashion here and you don't get that rate increase, at least not anytime soon here, that that sort of creates kind of a, I guess, a proverbial Goldilocks scenario for equities. And then that may be a late cycle stage of this uh, economy, a stage in this uh, market run, uh, all of a sudden becomes more mid-cycle. Yeah, I, I think the markets probably have been conditioned over the past decade or so into thinking that they're going to win either way. I, I hate to put it in those terms, right? So either uh, economic conditions, financial conditions are, are robust enough that the Fed can taper and the system can handle it, in which case the market yawns and moves on. And 2017 was kind of a period like that when the Fed was uh, kind of exiting. Um, or if the Fed goes too far and the system can't handle it, the market knows that the Fed will will probably back off fairly quickly. That's what happened in late 2018. We had that very scary 20% decline because the Fed was deemed to be overshooting on its normalization. But then the market went down 20%. The Fed immediately retreated, and the market went from pricing in hikes to pricing in cuts. And the market had probably its fastest rebound of that 20% that, that, that I think I've ever seen. So I think the market figures out it's going to win. Maybe it wins kind of in a more nonlinear way, but it's ultimately going to win. Um, and in that sense, there's really no need to, to worry. And I, I, again, I think the Fed is more likely to channel the 1940s Fed, uh, where it kind of held the system below the inflation rate, than the late 1970s Fed, you know, the Volcker Fed, where it was going to tame inflation at all costs. I think that former is a much bigger reality if inflation ends up being a non-transitory problem. If you were seeing periods of higher inflation and then slowing growth, where are you coming down on the debate over stagflation? Is it a worry to you? Um, yeah, I, I personally don't see that scenario happening too much. I think the, 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 the structural deflationary headwinds of debt and demographics are very, very powerful. But having said that, home prices certainly are going up, rents are going up, wages are going up. So those are fairly sticky components of inflation that may be more than just transitory. But, you know, the key part of that question that you just asked is what happens to nominal yields, right? So in the 70s, we had stagflation, inflation went up, yield, nominal yields went up with it. In this particular episode, if we do get structural inflation, will the Fed allow nominal yields to go up? Remember, the 40s, the World War II analog, um, the interest rates were suppressed at 2.5% long-term bond yields, even though the inflation rate during the 40s was 5.6%. And, um, and in that sense, I still like the analog of the U.S. Fed now versus where the Bank of Japan has been and is going. Um, not that Japan has an inflation problem, of course, but that to me is a big 
loose end in this whole um, in this whole uh, conversation because we've really not had many episodes of this happening in the past. Yeah, we, we can't follow any scripts or any textbooks right now, Yuri. And we're really trying to also factor in the ongoing headwinds that continue to batter when it comes to Delta, when it comes to the. COVID variant. There's a new variant being found in South Africa. We've got, once again, EU shutting out e US non-necessary travelers. How much do you feel that Delta will or will not be some sort of economic headwind? Yeah, you know, this has been very, very disturbing to watch, of course. I thought a few months ago we were finally going to be over this thing. And just in June, the, the, the percentage of US hospital beds occupied by COVID patients was only 2.2%. Uh, last time I checked my Bloomberg yesterday, it was about 14%. And, and you know, the peak over the winter was, I think, 18.7%. So this, this is a, a, a bad one. And it's not just like in the UK where it was a bunch of reported cases, but not a lot of hospitalizations. This is hospitalizations. And so, um, you know, it all depends, I guess, to the markets, not from a personal level, but from a market level, uh, whether that will drive renewed lockdowns. And I, too, saw the headline just a few hours ago about the EU. But so far, when you look at um, kind of measures of lockdown, and I follow the Goldman Sachs Effective Lockdown Index, um, it is still at the lows of the cycle, which means that the economy is relatively open, even though, like I said, the COVID wave is certainly very, very concerning. So, so far, the system is not locking down in response to this, but we don't know if that's going to remain the case, of course.